Welcome to the IBM Build Conference and to this session entitled Accelerate DevSecOps Using GitLab and IBM Liberty. In our session today, we really want to introduce you to some really exciting capabilities that GitLab and IBM together can bring to the table to help our clients venturing into this new cloud native world. This session will focus on IBM Web Series Liberty and the use of GitLab to bring DevSecOps best practices um, to help our clients achieve their goals of delivering software quicker with better quality. The two solutions really help our clients modernize their estate and address security challenges and of course, adopt automation. My name is Randy Langhennig and I'm a member of the worldwide IBM DevOps SWAT team. Um, it's, it's my honor now to hand off to Sherry Hahn of GitLab to, to provide an excellent overview of the security testing capabilities that GitLab brings to the table. So with that, I'm gonna pass it off to Sherry. Thank you, Randy. Um, it's great to connect with you all again. Uh, I'm Sherry Hahn. I'm the Solution Architect and the GitLab. Today, um, we would like to share with you the best practices and the customer success with the DevSecOps transformation. In addition to secure software pipeline, software supply chain, we have shown you in the previous and the other session. Um, in the other session, uh, we have walked you through the two chain landscape where uh, you have seen the landscape has gone through best in breed tools to custom integration, then to a single DevOps platform provided by GitLab. For application security, a similar path has occurred where you see this, uh, I call it spaghetti maze, uh, instead of old spaghetti code. Um, to attempt to address security concerns in the software. Uh, information security and application security teams brought in those tools, for example, for static and uh, dynamic application scans. Uh, you have seen fortified check marks uh, as tools used. And with fast adoption of uh, cloud computing, uh, container scans and open source dependency scans are imperative. So you have seen security teams brought in those tools like a sonar type um, to empower the security professions. This is what we call two chain tax. Every tools that get brought in, you're paying the tax, such as cost of the buying the tool, integrating the tool, and the running the tool. Now you multiply by how many of them here. We can count a dozen of them. Often the application security team is only able to scan so-called major releases for mission critical applications and the pre-production time. Vulnerabilities identified that time either not addressed, get pushed off, or if they are critical need to be addressed and you see releases get pushed out by days, even weeks. And also you ask, what happened to developers in this process? What role they can play to make software more secure? How can that be integrated into DevOps lifecycle? And uh, would the developers have the context switch to so many different tools if those capabilities get brought early into the software development lifecycle? And uh, also, those days, you probably already hear all this fuzz and buzzing about vulnerabilities identified in log4j. And uh, let's look at what's really happening. Um, we all use log4j since we're writing code on Java using Liberty, WebSphere. And in old days, I often use log4j just to output some debugging lines to help me uh, make my software better and uh, um, writing the code a little bit faster. Um, and it's this very feature of logging and the debugging that could bring in 
vulnerabilities that can be exploited by malicious attack to your software. And it's such a widespread issue now, and there are multiple common vulnerability exposures has been identified and need to be remediated. So it, it is critical and imperative for the developers to surface and address those issues as they are happening. And also going forward basis, have proactive ways to understand what kind of vulnerability or security issues have been brought into the code that just been written. Um, I, as a software engineer, I want to be educated that I'm writing security code. And if the issues has been identified, I want to know how to remediate. I might reach out to my security team professionals to triage them. So this comes in what we call DevSecOps, combining Dev, security, operations into a streamlined process where application security can be shift left to developer's hand. And then you wonder, how can we do that? Remember in the other session, we walked through the developer's flow where security scans can be part of the CI pipeline. So with every code change I make, when I commit the code, before the code has been reviewed and the merge back to the default branch, all the issues related to security is surfaced along with my code quality and the unit test results, where I can review each incident or each security problem and uh, having information provided to me to remediate the issue at the time it's being introduced in the code. And along the way, um, I'm improving my skill and writing better code as a software engineer or developer. So this uh, development flow really is truly enhanced um, to allow development team being productive and pro proactively addressing any security issues quickly and to speed up not only the development time and also improve the overall velocity while reducing the security risk. And Randy, um, I'd like to hand it back to you to showcase the success story for DevSecOps. Yes, thank you, Sherry. Yeah, recently a case study was released that speaks to the benefits of modernization as well as automation, which we're going to be showing you today. Um, modernization was achieved by transforming legacy WebSphere applications into lightweight cloud native IBM Liberty based applications. And for our session today, we're really from an automation perspective, we're going to highlight GitLab, which can provide an excellent CI CD pipeline capability um, that, that is really great to see. So I look forward to showing that to you. The end result for the client is flexibility and efficiency. The case study, and you can see the link to the case study on the slide, is based on some work from an IBM business partner called Flow Factor. They implement IBM application modernization uh, solutions for our clients. And in this case, they worked with a public trans transit provider in Europe that covers nearly 200 million kilometers, route kilometers, in a densely populated region. Um, Flow Factor worked with the transport company to help shift its culture to embrace automation and adopt DevOps practices. Some of this involved helping everyone understand that, you know, automation would not replace their jobs, but rather it would alter their jobs um, in some degree. For instance, in the past, application availability was the responsibility of the infrastructure team. Now the infrastructure team sees that the development team is taking responsibility to bring stability, not just new features, into production. You can see from this slide as well that the end result for the client was very significant, to a significant reduction in their deployment cycles for these applications. These are very impressive results. In the past, they would deploy everything manually. Now everything is automated. 
All right, so how did we get here? Let's take a look at several components used to help clients achieve these results. As you can see on the slide, we begin with the use of IBM WebSphere Liberty. What is IBM WebSphere Liberty? Well, it's a world leading application runtime that has been designed for new cloud native applications, as well as helping you modernize existing application workloads. It's designed to be lightweight, efficient, and simple to use. That this basically means that it saves you money for infrastructure costs. You know, for example, how much you pay uh, for cloud resources to execute your applications. And it'll also save you costs in terms of delivery, requiring reduced engineering time and reduced operational time. In the end, it helps you to increase your agility and increase your ability to innovate, which is fantastic. Now, as we go to this next slide, containers and Kubernetes are the clear winners when it comes to modernizing enterprise applications and moving them to the cloud. IBM provides pre-built Liberty containers based on UBI or Ubuntu operating system layers. The images that we build are production ready and they're pre-optimized for performance. Further, they su are supported in any Kubernetes or OpenShift environment. Um, as an application developer, you can take these Liberty images and add your application to them and place them in production with very little effort. At IBM, we make the pre-built Liberty containers available in the IBM Cloud Container Registry, as well as Docker Hub. The IBM Cloud Container Registry is really the recommended place to find our pre-built images, as our Liberty development team will publish those images to this registry. Um, of course, a really important um, item to discuss on this slide is the open Liberty operator provided by the IBM team. And you see reference to that at the bottom of the slide. Operators are extensions to Kubernetes that are customized to automate tasks beyond the initial automation that Kubernetes or OpenShift provides. When you deploy an application with an open Liberty operator, the operator will watch these open Liberty resources and compare the current state of resources to the state of the resources that you had configured. Um, when a discrepancy exists between the current state of the resources and the state you desired, the operator will create, update, or delete Kubernetes resources to return to the state that you had configured or desired, as mentioned earlier. This makes deployment simple, and it greatly reduces developers' learning curves when it comes to Kubernetes. This is really fantastic. All right, if we can go to the next slide. Okay, so the last component we want to speak to here is, is in the case study really speaks to, is leveraging a standardized and reusable build and deploy pipeline to bring automation. This is really where GitLab comes into play. And as you saw in the case study, the end result for the client was a 99% reduction in delivery time. Um, as mentioned earlier, modernization and automation um, really equals flexibility and efficiency. And GitLab is just the framework to help bring that standardized and reusable CICD pipeline. Um, and you, as you can see on this slide, Sherry and I are are now going to show you a demo of GitLab and Liberty working together to highlight the benefits that, that we've been talking to, which includes a improved security posture, a outstanding developer experience, as well as increased productivity for our developers. It's, it's a fantastic solution. So in this demonstration, I'm going to be playing the role of a Liberty application developer as mentioned, our team is working to modernize the way we develop our Liberty code to adopt more agile methodologies and to bring best practices to our cloud native development process. To help us with this modernization, we are using GitLab, as you can see on this slide, to drive our development, including using Git from a source code management perspective and the CI CD pipeline capability that comes with GitLab. Our pipeline includes best practices to scan for security issues at time of code commit, 
this is referred to as shift left testing. And, and this includes the use of a container scan, um, code quality, sat, you know, static application security tests, as well as dynamic application security tests, dependency scanning, secret detection, and more. And we'll also be using IBM DevOps tooling to help us achieve our goals to deliver quality software at a much quicker pace than we have in the past. So with that, let's go take a look at this new modern environment. This is our GitLab project, as you can see on the screen. Um, and within GitLab, of course, we're using the built-in repository. So we can see all the commits, the branches, the committers. And then, of course, there's the issues list. So we can go to a list here to see issues. Um, but the other thing that's really nice, you can see there is a new issue that's been opened by one of our testers. With the, within GitLab, you can, have, you can create your own boards. This is an example of a project sprint planning board. We can see that new issue as well as you can have a, a development board like this one. We can see there's a new one that's in our to-do column that looks like has been assigned to me. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on this, this issue. Um, as I do that, you'll notice um, they provided some details here, a screenshot of what they're seeing. It looks like our, our liveness REST API is responding with the down status. On the right-hand side, you can um, associate issues with milestones and epics, and you can see the, the labels. The labels are really, really nice um, and very effective in the boards that we saw earlier. This is really great. Um, now, GitLab, as mentioned in our previous or earlier session, we did talk about the Git flow capabilities that it has. And you can create a what's called a merge re request here. This is where I can work in my own uh, branch as a developer, a feature branch. So um, what I'm gonna go ahead and do is, is create that merge request here. As you do that, um, you can um, assign that merge request to other individuals if you want to, I'll assign it to myself. You can assign reviewers as you see here and my friend Kurt Dusek over at GitLab as an example could be someone that I'd want to approve this. But we also have some really nice security approval policy rules that you can put in place. And then based on the security results that come back, you know, the severity of those vulnerabilities or the number, it can automatically assign a reviewer uh, for this merge request to make sure good quality code is progressing through the pipeline. Now, for this particular demo, um, I'm going to use our, our development team is using Visual Studio Code as its IDE. Of course, you can open this merge request in the web IDE that GitLab brings to the table, but you see, you can see here I'm using Visual Studio Code. And um, as I, I do this, I, you can see we've installed an extension to Visual Studio called the Open Liberty Tools. It uh, really allows our developers to interact with their application in what's called a Liberty Dev mode. It really helps our developers and their productivity. Uh, we'll show that to you just momentarily. So I'm gonna go ahead and check out that this code um, and I'm gonna then begin to work within this feature branch in my IDE, as you can see here, and there's all the source code, etc. One thing that's, you know, I mentioned the extension, there's that Liberty Dev dashboard. What's really great about the, the dev mode capabilities are you can start your application locally on your developer workstation, um, and it will create the container for you. Um, it'll build your application, and then of course, start the container in dev mode, which again, provides some really nice features I'm about to show you. So you can see it's starting it up right now, and it's running in dev mode. And the first thing that I'm gonna do as a developer, they, when they created the issue, they mentioned that the liveness API endpoint was responding with the down status. So let's run our unit test rec directly in our IDE using dev mode. 
And sure enough, we are seeing, it looks like some responses, some failures with the liveness endpoint, incorrect response code, as well as the health endpoint above, we're seeing that the same and incorrect response code. The other thing that's really nice about this is I can interact with the application locally in my on my, my developer workstation and I can hit that rest endpoint and see that in the JSON response body I am getting a down status. Um, so sure enough, as the issue had reported, I am seeing a problem here with the application. So within the IDE, I'm going to navigate to my source and let's take a look at this one program called system liveness check .java. Um, and let's scroll down a bit and you can see here for our health check response um, we're uh, looks like there is a bug on line 39 of this code um, being the clever developer I am I'm gonna I'm going to fix that line of code and then I'll I'll press control s uh, to save those changes it'll mark it in the uh, IDE as being modified. I'm going to make a couple of minor changes as well, just for the demo um, in our main CSS. I'm going to change that background color gradient to purple, being that I am an IBMer and I love Liberty and WebSphere. Purple is very fond to me, as you may understand. And then I'm going to change the font size from 24 points to 32 points. And then one more minor change after I save that. I'm going to go to the index.html and just change this text to say it's working now, uh, just for a demo. So you can see I've changed that text there. I'll, I'll hit control S to modify that. Perfect. So one thing that one of the really great features of this dev mode capability um, in the IDE is that it will automatically behind the scenes restart our application for us um, with the changes that we just made. So there's no need for me to, you know, recompile, create a new container. I can just go run my unit test, as you can see there. And you can see that my unit tests are returning with it properly. They're passing. I can, again, interact with the application and see the nice purple. I and mean, I can see I'm getting a good uh, response back now uh, from that, that REST API call. So this is fantastic. Once I'm ready, what I'm going to do is I'm going to commit my changes um, into this merge request, that feature branch. And when that happens, this is really where the GitLab CI CD pipeline capabilities come into play. And you can see there are different phases here. My build phase, GitLab is built my application for me. Um, and GitLab, with its auto DevOps features, knows that, hey, this is a Maven-based application written in Java. So it's it's using a GitLab runner that supports that. It would also support Gradle as well, which is very popular for cloud-native build, you know, uh, capabilities. It supports both right out of the gate, which is really, really great. And you can see what it's doing now is it's creating our Docker container for us. And one thing that's nice with GitLab, it has a built-in container registry which you can leverage, and you can see that I'm 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 um, publishing my results here to the the container registry within GitLab, which is great. Um, of course, if you're using other registries, it'll GitLab will integrate with those as well. Um, we just for this demo wanted to show you that that GitLab has its own registry you can use right out of the gate. Now, one of the very important steps of a new, you know, environment like this is to do runs container scans. And this is really where the security testing comes into play and begins. But your application's Docker image may itself be based on Docker images that contain known vulnerabilities. Using this feature with GitLab, you can audit your Docker based applications to ensure your containers are secure, which is great. Not only the container scan is provided in GitLab platform, all the necessary application security scans and the tests are built in for developing cloud native applications. For example, static application security scan and uh, dependency scan. And uh, also, um, we can introduce a fasten test 
which look for unknown vulnerabilities. And on top of that, uh, we can generate a runtime environment to do dynamic scan, all built into the CI pipeline. And those scans runs really fast. Um, so while you're building your app, within a couple minutes, uh, you can see issues surface back to the merge request. Yeah, thank you, Sherry. That's absolutely right. You can see those scan results there in the test phase. Um, but we did run, you know, the license scan, is, as she mentioned, um, which is really helpful if, um, you know, it's, if you're using an open source project, the license scans can be set up to make sure you don't have any license file, no violations. Uh, the dependency scans are great to look for vulnerabilities and libraries used in your project. And then, of course, we have static application security tests. You can see those there. That's Think of that as like white box testing that can look for items like SQL scripting injections. Um, but GitLab has many SAS analyzers to support different coding languages, many of them actually, .NET, C, C++, Go, Groovy, Java in this case, and more. So you can see that those were run. This is really, really helpful um, that, I, you know, I think is very valuable as you um, begin this DevSecOps journey. One last thing I just want to mention, and thank you, uh, Sherry, is the secret detection. Um, you know, a recurring problem when developing applications is that people may accidentally commit um, secrets to a remote Git repository. Um, you know, secrets can include keys, passwords, API tokens, and other sensitive information. So with this pipeline in place and this reusable, repeatable process, it, it helps us to prevent secrets from getting committed to our Git repository. This is also very valuable. Um, so I just wanted to quickly mention that. Now, what we're going to do is when it completes this process, um, we are deploying the application to a review environment, as Sherry just mentioned. And we're using Urban Code Deploy, as you can see here, to do that. Um, and, and you can see all the steps here. Um, but it will begin to run that, that container in the review environment. And when that's done, what's great and what we want to highlight here is we can then run our dynamic application security tests against that running application. And as, as Sherry was mentioning, this is a form of black box testing that can scan the running application um, to look for issues. And DAS can analyze applications in one of two ways. Um, it can run a, a passive scan only, which is the default. It executes an OWASP Z attack proxy to do this. It's a baseline scan and then it's uh, it, and it doesn't actively attack your application. But uh, the other is a passive and active scan, which will perform an active scan to attack your application and produce a more extensive result. All right, so let's return back to the merge request, as you can see here. And I just want to highlight a few things. One is, and is when for the developer, it's really easy. You can see that view app button. This allows us to view our review app that's running right now, which we are running those dynamic tests against. And we can see the nice purple background. This is good. And we can hit our REST API endpoint, and we are getting that up response back. This is fantastic. This is good news so far. Um, and of course, what's really great about the merge request is it's really where the dev team can collaborate with operations, the security team and other product stakeholders, um, you know, each section in the merge request has a specific purpose. In the past, you may have to go to separate point solutions to view results, you know, of your security scans um, and so forth. But within GitLab, it's all within a single solution. So if I click this link here to view the vulnerabilities, I can see them right within this tool. And so can our CSO team. Uh, this is great. So we can collaborate here as we look through these different vulnerabilities. And I can filter on particular types of vulnerabilities. Let's let's look at the dynamic application security tests, you know, vulnerabilities that came back. You can see those here. 
One thing that's also nice with, with GitLab is for any one of these vulnerabilities, you can click a button over on the far right hand side and this will provide more information about the vulnerability. You know, a nice description, um, you know, what it did from a request res and response perspective and then proof. And you can right here, click that create issue. It'll populate the issue with all those details we just saw, or you can dismiss the vulnerability as well if you want to. But this is really great. I mean, the development team and security team and collaborate really to shift left their, their testing. As mentioned, you can also on the left hand menu on the security compliance, you can see your license compliance, you can see your dependencies. And then yeah, so, so Randy for dependency, if I'm not using version log 4 j that has known log 4 j CVEs, and mm -hmm. this can surface the dependency on that. And then if we take GitLab recommendation to remediate uh, the log4j uh, in the dependency scan, uh, you will see an action to ask you to upgrade to a version that's vulnerability free. So uh, it's really great too to have a same data model, same user interface. So that team does not need to contact switch into different security tools to remediate those issues. Yeah, thank you, Sherry. This is this is really fantastic. And one thing I just wanted to mention is uh, GitLab uses OWASP Foundation as this trusted authority or database to guide the results of these scans. So it's really great. Thank you, uh, Sherry. Um, of course, you can also click on the vulnerability report to see the overall vulnerability results. I wanted to say if you're you're um, just starting the journey of incorporating, um, you know, security tests for a project the first time through this pipeline, you you will find that GitLab security testing results tend to be overprotective to allow your security CSO team and, and your development team to collaborate and work through any technical debt in this area that you need to address. We find that being overprotective is better for our clients, it allows them to establish a good working baseline, especially when coming from a place of no security scans. All right. So this is great. This is really great. One, I'm just going to show you a couple of features uh, really quick. One thing, we, we are running the application in a review environment, as you saw, but within GitLab, you can go ahead and promote the change to a, a more production-like environment. You can see I click that acceptance environment, you know, button to deploy it there. This allows us to do some additional testing, you know, with more detailed data and, and a more production like environment. But when I'm done with that testing and I feel good about my changes as a developer, back in the merge request, I can mark this as being ready, this merge request. And then another member of my team with appropriate privileges, they can then click the merge button and merge this back into our main line, which in this case is our main, main branch. And when I do that, then it, another pipeline will run against that main branch with GitLab. It's, it's really fantastic. We're, we're very excited about the GitLab capabilities, but you can see that this pipeline against our main branch is very similar to what you just saw against the feature branch. And it's going to run the steps to build. It's going to run a step to create the container, just like we talked about earlier. It's going to run the container scan and, and run our test. But what's different about this one is that we are using OpenShift for the deployment and we have installed the Open Liberty operator, as you can see here. Again, this operator is really nice for Kubernetes deployments. It will uh, watch those resources and, and compare the current state of those Open Liberty resources to the state you desire. When our discrepancy is, is found, the operator will then create, update, or delete resources to return to the proper state. So you can see it hasn't been deployed yet, but it's about to be deployed. So we want to quickly show you this feature. This is really great. But back in Urban Code Deploy, we are going to use that operator to deploy that application into our OpenShift cluster. We can see the results. Urban Code Deploy has an excellent trail of audit. We can see 
in real time where we are. You can see that it was successful in creating our resources using the operator there in the output log. And if I go back into, you can see it's finished that step in our GitLab pipeline. But if I go back into the uh, OpenShift environment, there's our deployment. And you can see for our demo today, it's a single pod um, and it's using that operator. Of course, um, you can scale that as needed. And the operator will automatically create the services and the routes for us. So here's our route. This is great. Very easy for our developers to get up and running with from a deployment perspective. And we can see that nice purple background and we can test our API endpoint and we see we get, we're getting the proper response. This is great. You can see that we can reduce our development time and get things deployed much quicker than what we have in the past. This is really, really a fantastic solution. One last thing I just want to show you, and then I'm going to pass it back to Sherry, is within GitLab, there are some really nice value stream analytics that you can you can leverage. Um, you can see some of those metrics that are, are, are shown here in this page. But um, the GitLab analytics can help us identify areas of improvement along this DevSecOps journey. So as a team, you know, bringing IBM WebSphere Liberty and GitLab together, we can really help our clients um, improve the way they develop and, 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 and how and improve the quality of their products as well. Let me pass it back to Sherry now so she can um, continue. Thank you, Randy, for the fantastic demo for the GitLab DevSecOps solution using Liberty for cloud native application. You have now seen a better developer's workflow and the shift left application securities in the CI pipeline. Also, you have seen vulnerabilities can be surfaced real time with the security information to help the developer to remediate the issue immediately or if necessary to reach out to the application security team to triage and collaborate. This really improves the developer's velocity and the increased operations efficiency for building secure applications and the releasing the software to production for customers to use safely. I also like to share with you the success story with UBS. UBS needed to become more competitive with a faster time to market and to deliver software better and more securely while speeding up their cloud transformation. Partner with the GitLab, UBS has revolutionized their software delivery. UBS transformed its process, including DevSecOps, greatly improving developers' experience with high productivity and overall efficiency, and able to deliver secured banking applications from a single platform. I'm excited to showcase this customer journey with you all. Randy, back to you, and would you conclude today's session? Just again, um, as you can see from the session today, when you bring modernization as well as automation to your projects, the benefits for you will be greater flexibility and greater efficiency as well. And it's really an exciting solution that we're very, very pleased to introduce to our clients. And I, we really hope you enjoyed the session today. Thank you very much. Thank you for your time.